I'm Chris Shadowin, and this is Reviews of the Nerds. Today, I'm reviewing the board game Moonrakers by Ivy Studios. And no, this has no affiliation with the 1979 James Bond film starring Roger Moore. In this game, you take on the role of a mercenary working loosely with other mercenaries to complete contracts, upgrade your ship and crew to earn enough points to become the head of the Moonrakers. According to the box, Moonrakers is a game of shipbuilding, temporary alliances, and shrewd negotiation. It's a deck builder with a few twists. Like most deck builders, everyone starts with the same 10 cards. But from there, you can choose to buy crew members to add to your deck or ship parts, which give you permanent perks and add resources to your deck. On your turn, you can choose to complete a contract on your own, but if you want to win, you'll have to take on harder contracts that you can't complete alone. This is where the twist comes in. You'll need to negotiate with the other players to complete contracts. You have to decide if taking them is worth it, and you have to decide what contract rewards you're willing to part with. The harder contracts, the rewards are greater, but you have to roll hazard dice, which can cause you to lose victory points, which is what you need to win the game. The first one to 10 wins the game. If you're a fan of board games, deck builders, semi-co-op games, negotiating, and are arguing, then this game's for you. Trying to figure out strategies, deciding who to take with you on contracts, and figuring out who you should help or stab in the back is always a lot of fun. The replayability of it is great because there are so many different strategies to try. After playing this game for the first time, and losing, I immediately wanted to start again. I already had new ideas in my head of how I could win for the next time. The fact that you're engaged on other people's turns makes this game very interesting. And aside from the excellent gameplay, Ivy Studios has put out a game with very high quality components, including metal coins. Originally a Kickstarter game, it's now available on MoonrakersGame.com. My minor gripes are that turns can take a long time as people negotiate uh, for a long time, but you can set a timer if you would like. And some of the cards are square, so if you want to sleeve your cards, you have to buy custom sleeves from them if you like doing that. Besides these minor things, this game is top notch. I highly recommend adding this to your collection and your rotation of games you bring to the table regularly. I'm Chris Adwin, and remember, in space, no one can hear you rake the moon. Uncharted waters, unfamiliar territory, whereabouts unknown, area undiscovered. These phrases seem terrifying in most situations. Hearing any of these things may leave someone in a bit of a panic as they begin to step out of safety and into circumstances they've not yet encountered. At any moment, things could go awry and we're left in an unfamiliar area with no idea where to turn or what to expect next. How true this has been for countless people through the pages of God's Word. Abraham and Sarah's long trek to Egypt, Noah sailing through the floodwaters in hopes of dry land, Paul's missionary journey and travels, even Jonah making his way to Nineveh. And let's not forget where that ultimately landed him, right in the belly of that whale. Their journeys were all unique, purposefully different. But one thing they all have in common is the faith produced through the unknown. When all else is unknown, allow your faith to be concrete in the faithfulness of the one who knows, the one who provides, the one who sees and makes a way even through the storm. Let's never forget that the God who parted the Red Sea to make a way for safety for his people is the same God who is in control of our lives. And while the waters may be uncharted to us, they can be moved at any moment by the God who knows the very depths no man has yet to discover. Hey everyone, I'm Hector Mirai, and this is Faith and Fandom 180 on LTN Radio. So, I've been playing Pokemon Legends Arceus a little too much. Like, if I'm, I'm, I'm super honest, um, <laughs> this is 
going to sound bad on audio, but I'm pretty sure I've played that game more than I've slept in the last three days. So I took today off from playing, by the way, um, because I made that realization. Um, but one of the things that I've really enjoyed about the Pokemon games of the last, you know, eight years or so, um, as I've been playing them more, have been the fact that whenever you beat the air quotes campaign and the credits roll, there's usually like a whole other storyline to go with. Like I know for like Sword and Shield, once you won the big tournament, there's a whole other mystery and some more legendaries and stuff that you have to go do. And so Arceus is a different style of Pokemon game. So I wasn't sure how that was gonna play out. So I saw myself getting close to the end, air quotes. And then I beat the game and the credits rolled. And I texted my friend. I'm like, hey, beat it. Yay. Woo. And then uh, it's like, oh, psych. Uh, here's a whole other game that you got to keep playing. And uh, final bosses and stuff that were much harder than one you just beat. I'm like, cool, 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 cool. And <laughs> like, so I kept playing. And then <laughs> after sitting there way too long, I beat that boss. And I'm like, yeah, it's over. And then they give you this thing um, without spoilers and there's this big ending and this big boss, uh, but you can only do it after you have caught every single Pokemon. And by the count on this game, that's 240 Pokemon. And uh, it reminded me of this verse in Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So many of us, we want like a short version of the gospel, where as long as we like share with a couple people or whatever else, you know, we can stop. But the reality is the, the mission and the focus of the gospel is that it has to keep going until every person is reached, and then it'll end. And I literally looked at that screen and said, but I don't want to have to catch them all. And that's how most people look at, you know, sharing their faith. Remember to catch Faith and Fandom 180 every Wednesday morning on the Back Row Morning Show only on LTN Radio. And if you'd like to learn more about Faith and Fandom, head over to faithandfandom.org where you can learn about our Comic-Con ministry, podcasts, memes, apparel, and book series. You can even read new chapters before they make it to the next book. I'm Hector Mirai, and thank you for spending the last 180 seconds with me. Have you ever been around another person that used a word or phrase that you were absolutely certain you should know, but you didn't? Of course you have. Well, don't worry, nerd, because we've got some great news for you. You're about to learn something brand new. This is the real world, bub, and you need to learn to hold your own in a nerdy conversation. So pull up an ear and pay attention because LTN has another nerdy definition for you. Today's term is cheese. No, we're not talking about that sweet, melty goodness that makes life worth living. We're talking about a strategy in games like League of Legends. In particular, a cheese is an unorthodox, unusual, or unpredictable strategy that is used by a player or team that has a huge risk of failure, but if it's managed to be pulled off, also offers a big win. These strategies typically only work when the opponents don't see it coming, because it's often such a dumb play, no serious player would typically try it. Sometimes cheesing refers to a strategy that uses an element that isn't technically cheating, but most players would consider it to be. An example from my childhood would be from the original Mortal Kombat game, where a player could use Scorpion's get over here move over and over again and never let their opponent even make a move. That is a chi strategy, a cheap trick that requires almost no skill but does a lot of damage. Simply put, it's bad manners. But why is it called cheese? No one really has that nailed down, as the term actually dates back as early as 1992. However, the leading theory is that it's just a combination of the words cheap, cheat, and easy. So next time you're playing Among Us and someone kills you on spawn, you can call them out for cheesing, because now you understand that reference.